Today, I'm going to bring a, a message. The title of my topic today is called The Pursuit of Purity. The Pursuit of Purity. And, and you know, as a youth pastor, you know, leading high schoolers and middle schoolers along with me and my wife, I, I begin to realize that purity in the eyes of the world of teenagers has so much to do with um, sexual things. It has to do with not watching pornography, not sleeping around with your girlfriend, not sleeping around with your boyfriend or living together if you guys are not married, which it does have a little bit to do with that. But what I began to realize is purity has so much more to do with our hearts than it has to do with our hands. Hands does have uh, a role to play. And what do I mean by hands? It's you know, our physical acts, not watching pornography, not sleeping around, not committing adultery, not committing fornication, smoking, drinking, d different types of things, cursing and, and, and all that kind of stuff. So it has something to do with it. But as I study the Bible and as I study the scriptures, I realize purity is so much to do with the position and posture of our heart towards Jesus than our hands here on earth don't get me wrong what we do with our hands will will begin to affect our hearts but what I realize is what we do with our hands what we do on on earth here is a direct byproduct of the position of our hearts when we are pure in heart we don't want to do the things of the world. When we are, there is holiness, there is righteousness. When, when you are clean, you know, you get a brand new car. I mean, you're telling, hey, hey, like dust off your shoes. You get in a new house. Hey, I mean, when you're in your mom's and dad's house, you went mud straight through the house. But it's your house. You're like, no, 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 this is clean. I don't want nothing dirty in here. When there is a purity in the heart, it affects our hands. Matthew 5 Eight. It says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Isn't that our goal that we see Jesus, that we see God? Isn't our goal in, on this earth is not to have, our end goal is not to just have big services and lead big congregations. That is our commission, everything. But that at the end of the day, our main goal is that we are one with Jesus. That our hearts are connected to the heart of Jesus that we are in relationship with with Jesus I don't want to go to heaven it says you heal the sick you prophesy my name in my name you cast out demons but get away from me because I don't know you I want it to be that my heart is pure purity is not a place you arrive to one day it's a day-to-day -day devotion to God it's a day-to-day -day devotion to God. First point that I want to bring to us this morning is purity is a pursuit. Purity is a pursuit. And I want to read from the Bible. Come on, we're going to do some church this morning. And so if you like something, shout back at me. Come on, somebody. And, and we, I believe in pulling the anointing out of a speaker. You can, they're going to be the two same people in the same place, hearing the same message, experiencing the same worship in the same environment, leaving completely different. One takes what God is doing and receives it. One just closes their hearts. Come on, somebody. But I, I believe there's people in this room that are saying, God, we need you more today. I need you. My family needs you. My marriage needs you. My kids need you. God, I am nothing without you. God, we are in need of your presence and in, of your spirit. It's a pursuit. It's a pursuit. I want to read from Genesis 39. It's a, it's a scripture we all know. Um, it talks about Joseph and, and, and him and his. Joseph is this, this young man. He gets a dream from God um, that he's going to rule and all that. And then his brothers, his brothers betray him. They sell him. They're going to kill him, but they do better. They just sell him. Come on. That's, thank God for brothers and sisters. And so they thought they were doing good. His older brother's like, let's not kill him. Let's sell him. Man, he's going to love us for this one. <laughs> brothers, I'm telling you. And so verse 3, 39 verse 3, we're going to go through it and and we're going to do some church. And when his master saw that the Lord was with him 
and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did. Joseph found favor in his eyes, became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household and he entrusted of his care everything he owned. From the, from the time he put him in charge of his household and all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of, of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care. With Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself with anything except the food that he ate. Now Joseph was a well-built, handsome man. Come on, somebody. And after a while, his, I don't know why you guys are laughing. After a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, come to bed with me. That was a liar. But he refused. With me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns, he entrusted to my care. Nobody is greater in this house than I am. My master withheld nothing from me except for you because you're his wife. Duh. How then could I do such a wicked thing against God? And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. One day he went into his house to attend his, to his duties and none of the household servants were inside. She called him by his cloak and said, come to bed with me. He left his cloak in, in her hand and ran out of the house. When she saw that he had left his cloak in her hand and had run out of the house, she called her household servants. Look, she said to him, this Hebrew has been brought to us to make a sport of us. He came here to sleep with me, but I screamed. When he heard me scream for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. She kept his cloak beside her until the master came home. Then she told him this story. That Hebrew slave that you brought, brought us came to me and to make a sport of me. But as soon as I screamed for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. When his master heard the story, his wife told him, saying this is how your slave treated me. He burned with anger. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison. The, per, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. But while Jesus, Joseph was there in prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. Come on, how many of you guys love the Bible? How many of you guys love the Bible? 2 Timothy 2, 22, it says, flee the evil desires of youth, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace along with those who call on the Lord out, out of a pure heart. First point is purity is a pursuit. Purity is a pursuit. Purity is not a thing, a place that you arrive to one day because if purity is a place that we can achieve, a place that we can arrive to one day that means you just got to do a b c and d you will get there and you will stop trying but purity because it's something we can live in because we're holy being made holy we can we can pursue after Jesus and get to this place of living in purity but to live in purity we have to consistently constantly constantly pursue Jesus so you can get to this place, I'm living in purity, but if you stop pursuing Jesus, you fall out of purity. And I love this in the story of Joseph. He has so many things in life that are pulling at him to fall away from Jesus, to fall away from the call of God in his life. He has so many distractions that are tugging and nugging at him to step away from the calling of God in his life. A lot of times it's good things, it's bad things. But what we have to do as Christians, we got to pursue the God thing. We have to pursue after his heart. If purity is a, if purity is a devotion to Jesus, then impurity is divided devotion. If purity is complete devotion of our heart to Jesus, then impurity is a divided devotion. I have a question. 
What today is attracting our attention that belongs to Jesus? What are we fixing our eyes on that our eyes are supposed to be on, the, on Jesus? What in our life is taking the position, the place that belongs to Jesus? That causes impurity because what our generation has made purity to be is don't, uh, don't sleep around, don't watch porn, don't, watch, don't do fornication. It has very little to do with that. It does do with that a little bit, but it has more to do with your heart devotion after Jesus. So that means that if you lose your virginity, purity isn't virginity. Pure, virginity is up till marriage and then marriage is designed for you to lose that and be with your wife or your husband. Does that mean God is not calling us to live pure anymore? No. So if purity is not virginity, if it, what is that? If it's not sexual acts, what is it? It's our heart's devotion after Jesus. So this is what happens is Joseph is in this place where his heart is after Jesus, but he has so many things in life that are tugging at him to pull away from his purity, from his pursuit after Jesus, from his pursuit after what God called him to do. I want you to see in the life of Joseph, in the life of Joseph, he, he got a dream from God. A lot of times dreams from God can even become a distraction from what God is actually calling us to do. We started off by our calling being ministry to God and then it ended up being ministry just to people and we lose our ministry from God. We lose our devotion to God and get so devoted to people. So even a dream can become tugging at his purity to begin to sidetrack from what God has called him to do. Not just that, we go a step further. Joseph says his dream to his family and his, and his brothers laugh at him, mock at him. They say, oh, here's the dreamer. Look at the dreamer coming in. And, and then they try to kill Joseph. They don't kill him. They just sell him. Now you have Joseph. Not only he got a God dream, but now he's being rejected by his family. I don't know whether it's dreams that distract you from your devotion or from God, or maybe it's rejection from family maybe it's things that are not going good see the devil will throw everything and anything to get us to distract to walk away from our purity our pursuit after Jesus whether it's dreams visions uh, ambitions or whether it's problems in the family he will throw everything and anything at us to get us to walk away not only that he finally gets to a place where he is in Potiphar's house and he has a position there. And here comes Potiphar's wife. Girl needs deliverance. She's got the spirit of Jezebel. And, 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 and she ruins it. And he's living pure. And, and all of a sudden he's living pure. And he gets sent to prison. And you go a step further. He interprets somebody's dream. And he tells the cupbearer and, and, and all of them, hey, remember me when you get out of there. He interprets the dream right. The, the king takes them out of prison. They forget about Joseph. Now you get the dream, you get abandonment, you get rejection. And there are so many opportunities around the life of Joseph to pull him away from his devotion to Jesus. To pull on his purity. To not stay, stay on track to what God has called him to do. But I want you to see this thing. I want you to see what Joseph tells Potiphar's wife. He says, my master has entrusted me with everything. How can I do such a wicked thing to God and to my master? I want you to see this relationship he had with his master. The trust he had with his master and with God caused him not to fall into impurity. His devotion to Jesus caused him not to get emotional in times of temptation 
but to stay on track to his path because pure staying on track to your purity is a path to your purpose what God has you on as he's not trying to keep you away from good things in life the devil's gonna try to throw good things in your life bad things in your life things that will just distract you because really you're on your path to your purpose and a lot of times that has to do with your purity come on can I get an amen today so out of respect to his master, Joseph doesn't sleep with his wife. It's a pursuit after Jesus. In a, in a lot of times people, well, you pursue Jesus, life is going to be spick and span. Life is going to be amazing. Life is going to go, um, it's going to go so good. But it really in times, it's difficult. Really in times... As a Christian, you have to just make the right choice in the face of the easy choice. And a lot of times, it's when nobody would know. I want you to see what happens in this story. Because, see, what sin and impurity is going to do, it separates us from Jesus. Purity is a pursuit after Jesus. Sin separates us from Jesus. Sin doesn't push God away from us. It pushes us away from God. A lot of times when, why God wants us to pursue purity because it connects us to Jesus. We are one with him. We are pursuing after his heart. We're pursuing after him. We are so in love with him because Jesus loves us so much. He paid a high price for us and he wants a relationship. And the reason because to, to those that are lukewarm, legal, no, having the, the, the thing in life where, hey, I want to pursue purity. Purity is legalism to those that are living a lukewarm life. We want to live purity. Oh, it's legalism. No, because, because that sin separates me from Jesus. And then when it separates me from Jesus, I start to feel like I don't feel God. I don't hear God. I don't sense God. And it's not that because you sinned, God left you. It's because when you sin, you separate yourself from God. A sinning man will stop praying and a praying man will stop sinning. We have to stay pure to what God is calling us to do. I want you to see that 2 Timothy 2.22, it says, flee youthful lust, but pursue after righteousness, faith, love, joy. I want you to see purity has more to do with pursuing than it has to do with fleeing. We, got, we can't believe this lie of the enemy that purity is don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. 100% those are things that we do not do. But purity has more to do with saying one yes to Jesus than a million no's to the world. It's more about saying yes to your devotion to Jesus than it is saying no to drugs, no to sin, no to sleeping around. Because that is called religion relationship out of a relationship look at what Joseph says because my master he didn't say because I living pure he didn't say because I'm a man of God what you pay attention he didn't say because I am high and mighty he said because my master entrusted me I'm gonna tell you this church our human will has its strength, but it has its, it has its restrictions. It has its end. There is a certain point where we can no longer rely on our own strength, but we need the Spirit of God. I'm not better than you because of me. I'm not better than you because I'm higher. I come from a different family. I'm, I'm not in that part of life that you're in because of my master. Because of the God that I serve and the relationship that I have. I won't do A, B, and C. Not because I'm better, but because I have a God and have a relationship with him. I want you to see his response to sin 
is because he has a reverence to his master. I wonder what, what if a lot of our response to sin in falling in impurity, falling into sexual sin, our devotion to God breaking is because we don't have a reverence to Jesus. And you can't have a reverence to somebody you don't have a relationship with. What am I getting at today? Pursue his presence. I mean, I'm talking about be a lay down lover of Jesus. All the other mannerism, all the other things in life, it doesn't matter if we don't know the heart of God. It doesn't matter if we're pursuing A, B, and C in life, but we are missing the heart of God. We got to get so in love with Jesus that, that when the pastor gets up, when, when we get these things, we don't throw the name legalism at it. We put, we, were, we put the label, I'm protecting my relationship with him. This is not legalism. I'm not doing this because I just don't want to. I'm doing this. I'm not doing this because I have a love for Jesus and he has a love for me. Someone shout pursuit of purity. The same way pursuing God helps us avoid sin, avoiding God pushes us into sin. It pushes us into sin. Number one, purity is a pursuit. Number two, purity requires a choice. And it will be challenged. I want you to see what happened. You would think homegirl does not want, realizes Joseph doesn't want to sleep with her, but I want you to see day after day, the Bible says, she nags at him. Day after day, that temptation pops up. And you would think purity, purity is like, okay, I said no once and, and that's about it. It comes again and again. You want to know why Purity is a pursuit after Jesus. Temptation becomes a daily thing as well. Distractions, things in life, loss, being fired, kids in trouble, demoted. Distractions in life will constantly nag, whether it's good or bad. Sometimes, sometimes people think, Oh, it's only bad things that will push or pull me away from God. No, no, no. A lot of times, good things. You see, God blesses people with a job and you never see them in church again. You never came here because your heart was for Jesus. You wanted God to bless you. You got the blessing and you left the blesser. And this is where us as Christians... God, whether you heal me or not, you are my healer. God, whether you deliver me or not, you are my deliverer. God, whether you save me or not, you are my savior. Like the three Hebrew boys, my God will come through. But even if, come on, I wish there were some people that had an even if faith. Not if my God comes through, but even if he, does, he doesn't come through, I still won't bow to you. I won't bow to the gods of our culture. I I won't bow to the gods of our society. I won't bow to the gods of every single lie of the devil. I'm going to stand up in a bow down culture. If you believe that, give God a shout of praise. It requires a choice. It's every single day. And the Bible says, and he refused. He refused. Pursuing purity, staying devoted to Jesus requires an everyday choice. Some people think, oh, it's going to be like this sexy decision. I'm going to make it once and it's going to be good. I'm going to say yes once and it's good. Yes, and then my life's forever. Good. No, no. 5.30 a.m. and the alarm cl clock rings and that just demonic voice. Ah, ah. It's straight from the devil, I'm telling you. But the Bible says what the devil meant for evil, he will use for good. So it, it's a demonic sound, but as God, God is trying to wake you up. It's a choice. 
when nobody's watching the Bible says and none of the household servants were there none of it you know what impurity is gonna promise us you know what the devil promises through impurity he promises secrecy security satisfaction when it comes through sin the only thing it will promise is separation do this you're gonna get secrecy nobody will know you're gonna get you're gonna get satisfaction you're gonna get security honey if it comes through compromise security satisfaction secrecy is not what you're gonna get you might get that but what you're gonna get on top of it is separation sin separates us from Jesus if purity is devotion to Jesus impurity is divided devotion what in our lives as a believer as a Christian is pulling us away from the face of Jesus because I don't know about you but I want to see God and the Bible says blessed those that blessed those that are pure in heart for they will see God I don't want to just have a big youth ministry at the cost of what I want to see the heart of God. Amen. I want to be so close that yeah. he can whisper and I hear his voice. I want to be so attached to his heart that when his heart breaks, my heart breaks. I want to be so close to the heart of Jesus that God's heart interrupts my plans. Yeah. Oh, I wish somebody was hearing me this morning. It's a choice. And I'm going to tell you this. It will be challenged. That's why I tell young people every time they give their lives to Jesus. I said, we're going to pray this prayer. I know you're feeling emotions, but it's not an emotion. You're making a choice for devotion. Because today, you got 200, 300 people, Christians applauding you when you want to run after Jesus tomorrow you're gonna go to work you're gonna go to school and your old friends your old habits your old group your old teacher your old classroom your old sins are gonna come knocking at your joy at, at your door and they're gonna tell you hey let's go back to it and now you're faced with a choice was it a feeling was that simply an emotion or do I stick to my devotion to Jesus? Come on, son. I want you to see how tricky the devil works. The devil's sneaky. The devil is manipulative. He works with deception. I want you to see how he's going to try everything that he can do to get you to fall off the track of purity because he un he understands where was joseph going through we know joseph didn't know but we know the beginning of joseph's story and the end of joseph's story the end of joseph's story he gets to his promise he gets to his purpose so what is the devil trying to get joseph to do to fall off of the path of his purpose what is going to keep him on the path to his purpose? Purity. Devotion to Jesus. A love for Jesus. Because can I tell you, your Christian life is not straight up. There is some roller coasters. I don't know if it's just me that has experienced some roller coasters in my walk with Jesus. I don't know if it's just me that have experienced some ups and downs, some, some doubts, some things in life. But it's an up and down journey. But at the end, we win. I don't know if you read the Bible to the end. But at the end, after all the devil does, we are on the winning side. So impurity is simply to push us off the path to our purpose. It's simply, that's all he's trying to do is to push us out of it. And this is what he does. Joseph is faced with two choices. Look how the, 
how sneaky the devil is. The devil's a liar. You have a choice. Practice your purity. Number two, procrastinate your purity. And look how the devil, look how the devil is going to frame this to us. He's going to say, practice your purity. Look where you end up in prison. Is it worth it? Procrastinate your purity. No, don't like, I know the right thing is to do is to like, you know, live pure. Go after Jesus. Procra procrastinate just for this moment. And you're not going to go to jail. You're not going to go to prison. You're going to experience pleasure. The devil is a liar. He is going to ask us to sacrifice eternity for immediately. Impurity is only for a moment. Can I tell you, church? It will make you feel good for a little. Impurity is here for a good time, not for a long time. And it will leave you broken. And the thing is, what the real reason is, the devil will frame this in your mind. Practice your purity, you're going to go to prison. He's lying to you. Practice your purity, you're a little closer to your purpose is what's really happening. Second, procrastinate on your purity. Oh, you're going to experience a good time. She's beautiful. You're going to experience pleasure. What you don't know is you're getting pushed from your purpose. You know, I wonder if alcohol commercials were to show statistics of people dying on the road because of out drunk drivers, if the commercial would look as appealing than it does now. Think about it. They will show you Bud Light, Corona, and they'll show you on the beach. But they won't show the husband beating his wife. They'll show you with your friend group on the beach, popping a bottle. They don't show you hitting your bed at night, hitting your head on the pillow at night, crying yourself to sleep because your life is as empty as that beer bottle. I wonder, and just listen, listen, we're having a talk here. I wonder if more people would drink alcohol if they put the statistics of the amount of family members that lost a mom, a dad, a brother and sister due to a drunk driver. I wonder if it would be as appealing to give up our purity because the devil is painting a picture that purity is a waste. You know, sexual impurity is the waste because it's pushing me from the perfect marriage that God has me for, from the purpose that God has me for. Come on somebody. The devil is a liar. He's gonna paint a picture to us. Don't make the right choice. Make the easy choice because look if you're gonna make the right choice you're gonna go to prison. Nobody wants to go to prison. But if you just, you know, nobody's gonna know. If you just procrastinate on your purity you're gonna experience pleasure. You're gonna experience a good time. We as Christians, we got to grow in our spiritual maturity. We got to grow in the Word of God. See, the Word of God gives us a blueprint of the enemy's plans. The devil is a liar and he's going to paint us a picture. You do this, you get this. Really, he's painting a picture that immediately this is what you get, but you actually sacrifice so much more in the back end. Purity is a choice. Someone say, it's a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. The devil is sneaky. His reason for you to give up your purity is satisfaction, fulfillment, release. You're stressed. You deserve it. You should feel good. But his real reason is, I don't want you in the palace. I don't want you to step into your purpose. Don't sacrifice your purpose for a momentary, momentarily pleasure, moment of pleasure. Don't sacrifice that. You know, as a youth pastor, piano could come up. We're going to get into a moment of worship and we're going to pray. I believe God's going to do something this morning. I believe God is already moving on hearts. You know, I tell um, 
as a youth pastor, I talk with a lot of parents and I have a lot of parents' phone numbers and, and sometimes they'll drop off their kids and we give them the kind of the rule like, hey, you can sit in the back for about one to two times and then uh, let your kids have some freedom, let them come, free daycare, we got you, go on a date. And, uh, you know, cash app me later. And so, <laughs> you got the cash app back there? No, okay. And um, they'll come up to me after service. They'll pick up their kids and they'll come weeping. And they said, Zach, if I heard this when I was 12, 13, I wouldn't be dealing with what I'm dealing with at 30 or 40. Because the devil promised me at 12, 13, 15, 16, 18, just procrastinate. Don't stay pure. Look at what the rest of the generation is doing. But the devil somehow leaves out the fact that you're going to pay the consequences later. He will show you the parties on the beach with the bottle. He won't show you the DUI that same night. He won't show you the loss of life. The parents that don't get a daughter anymore. Don't get a husband anymore. He won't show you that. He will just show you that immediately. But we are not living life for today. We are living in today for eternity. We are living to run the race, like Apostle Paul said, to the end. It's a choice. And I don't know what distractions you're being faced with today. I don't know if it's good things, if it's bad things, whatever it is. But do not let anything in life pull you away from the purity from the devotion some of you guys might be like well Zach I understand 2 Timothy 2.22 flee youthful lust but pursue faith uh, righteousness love joy and all that kind of stuff but it's difficult can I tell you something fleeing lust will become easier when pursuing Jesus becomes more consistent I'm not saying it's easy. Well, we got to choose our chains here. Devotion to Jesus might be difficult. Let me tell you something. I would, I'd rather serve Jesus for the rest of my life than be a slave to, to the devil. So it might be not easy for a moment. But, but, but can I tell you this? That pursuing Jesus makes fleeing lust so much easier you you know where the devil gets lies to us he lies to us in making us believe what we're leaving is better than where we're headed think about the the israelites when they're headed to the promised land they just got out of hundreds of years of slavery think about this think of how manipulative the devil is you just got out of hundreds of years of slavery and you hit a red sea you hit a a, a stumbling block you hit a new bondage a, a new battle and these thoughts come in well at least we had onions back there onions God has milk and honey for you. And you want to go back to onions? And the devil is a liar. He will make you think your old bondage is easier than your new battle. If God, come on. If God be for me, who can be against me? If he is the God that took me out of Egypt, he is the God that will bring me into my promised land. If he can take me out of slavery, he will get me through the Red Sea. I don't know if it's by walking. I don't know if it's by boat. I don't know if he's going to fly me there. But if he did it back, back then, he would do it again. It's a choice. Someone shout, it's a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. He's going to convince you where you're coming out of is easier. Why? Because look at that. You became a Christian and while, look now, your family, is, your family is judging you. Look at that. You became a Christian and look, now your parents are judging you. 
you're having these issues in in life and all of a sudden these things are coming up and what really is happening is God is purifying you as a Christian God is molding you as a Christian he's sanctifying you he's making you into his image that's what's really happening when you purify gold you got to take it through heat for impurities to come up and that's what God's doing so things are coming up curses are being broken but traumas are being healed all these things are coming up and he's gonna say look your Red Sea that's impossible you know what was impossible getting out of slavery for the past 400 years why all of a sudden it's impossible for this and he's gonna bring this lie your old bondage is better than your new battle somewhere somehow we've allied the we've allowed the lie to get so far into our minds and so ingrained into our beliefs that our past is somehow better and brighter than our future that it disarms us in the face of a new battle I'm here to encourage somebody I don't know where you're at I don't know if you're in Egypt I don't know if you're before the Red Sea I don't know if you're in the promised land I don't know where you're at but I want to encourage you here today last point purity has a reward it's a pursuit it's a choice and it's going to be a hard choice it's going to be a, it's a choice that's going to be challenged every day I mean we live in a generation we live in a hyper sexualized generation purity is going to be difficult if you make it about saying no to purity and not saying yes to Jesus it's going to be a choice and it's going to be challenged but but I'm going to tell you in the very end look what happened with Joseph he gets to the palace but I want you to see that he gets to the palace and he's not traumatized he goes through the fire and he doesn't smell like smoke he goes through the swarming waters and he's not wet he gets to the palace and he doesn't have the filter of pain he doesn't have the filter of pain and you know what he tells his brothers when his brothers come he tells him you sold me but God sent me you what you meant for evil God turned it into good I'm telling you, God has a purpose and He has a plan in your life. Stay pure, stay holy, stay righteous, pursue after Him. Devote your mornings, devote your days, devote everything to Jesus. And there is a reward. Three rewards that I see of staying pure. One, we see the face of God. We experience Jesus. You know why so many people, when they get into sin, they feel like God... I don't feel God anymore is because sin separates it muds our eyes from seeing his presence it mud it dirties our eyes from seeing the goodness that's why when people give their lives to Christ they get delivered what do they say the, the colors are brighter they say I feel lighter I feel better I can dare guarantee you ask our sister right here down here when she experienced Jesus God set her free all of a sudden life becomes more joyful problems don't become as annoying and you begin to realize you because of sin your eyes have been closed to the goodness of God it's not that he's not there it's it's it's, it's we're separated from him our eyes cannot see it second we avoid pitfalls disguised as pleasure everything that was thrown at Joseph it was a pitfall it was a pitfall come on you're gonna go into this it might feel good it might be bad but everything was to dis distract us from getting to the palace it was to distract us from getting to our promise third we stay on the path that leads us to our purpose I don't know where I don't know where we're at in our journey our devotion with Jesus but I just feel this on my spirit a lot of our devotions have been we've been distracted in our devotions we've gone astray some of us I, I can see it all over this room tears are falling down your face because the Holy Spirit has been tugging on you 
and today today this morning has been a confirmation that God he's here he hasn't left you you might have left God but he hasn't left you He's there. He's waiting for you. Thank God we have a father that when we go to secret, in our secret place, he is there. He's waiting for us. He's not going to judge. He's not going to convict. You see, church is not about how you come in. It's about how you go out. And I pray today you go out here encouraged. I pray you go out here and you realize you don't have to restart your devotion. You resume. You get back where you left off. You stand up. The righteous man falls seven times, but he gets up. He gets up. Rededicate yourself to devotion after Jesus. I know it's been difficult. I know there's been pains. I know you've been in a place of the prison or you've been in a pace, place of pain or, or, or Potiphar's wife just, just lying about you. I don't know where you've been, but what I can tell you is everywhere in the Bible, the Bible says God was with Joseph. <sighs> He's with Joseph. 